Intel Sports, Liberia's premier and exclusive sports and television station, is located in Congo Town, opposite the EJS Ministerial Complex. At Intel Sports, we offer professional sports coverages to include live coverage, sports analysis and commentaries, documentaries, features, pre and post productions, highlights of all disciplines and many more for business purposes you can contact us on these numbers intel sports we remain liberia's premier and exclusive sports television live on satcon channel 8. Intel Sports, Liberia's premier and exclusive sports and television station, is located in Congo Town, opposite the EJS Ministerial Complex. At Intel Sports, we offer professional sports coverages to include live coverage, sports analysis and commentaries, documentaries, features, pre and post productions, highlights of all disciplines and many more for business purposes you can contact us on these numbers intel sports we remain liberia's premier and exclusive sports television live on satcon channel 8. Intel Sports, Liberia's premier and exclusive sports and television station, is located in Congo Town, opposite the EJS Ministerial Complex. At Intel Sports, we offer professional sports coverages to include live coverage, sports analysis and commentaries, documentaries, features, pre and post productions, highlights of all disciplines and many more for business purposes you can contact us on these numbers intel sports we remain liberia's premier good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you're watching us from welcome to this special interview here on intel sports liberia's premier uh, sports online television. We're coming to you live and direct and from our Congotan offices in Monrovia. Just a day to the last uh, encounter on tomorrow, uh, we are privileged to have in studio the newly unveiled senior national team head coach of Liberia, a Romanian uh, football, uh, former footballer and a professional coach in person of Mario Marinica. We'll be talking more about his own uh, professionalism, his coaching style. We'll be talking about his plan and vision uh, for the senior national team and a lot more. We'll also be taking in your own uh, contribution by your text messages as you'll be going along. We'll be reading some of your messages and your questions and inquiries. We also will be taking them in as well. So welcome to it. We're taking this short break. When we come back, we usher in our guests and begin the discussions. Intel Sports, Liberia's premier and exclusive sports and television station, is located in Congo Town, opposite the EJS Ministerial Complex. At Intel Sports, we offer professional sports coverages to include live coverage, sports analysis and commentaries, documentaries, features, pre and post productions, highlights of all disciplines and many more for business purposes you can contact us on these numbers intel sports we remain liberia's premier and exclusive sports television live on satcon channel 8. 
Many friends will be joining us, and if you're just coming out, we would like to say welcome to this, this special interview with uh, the new senior national team head coach. Could you like to welcome? It's good that you can come on our platform. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for the invitation. And, uh, and I want to say uh, hello to everyone, and it's a great pleasure to have the chance to uh, express my uh, uh, thanks for uh, being very welcomed in the country. Uh, I really feel uh, welcome and my staff as well. Uh, we have managed now to have the complete staff, mm -hmm. uh, which actually give us uh, a chance now to move on. And at the same time, I want to thank for giving the opportunity to address some potential questions. Okay, thank you, Coach. Uh, before we start up, uh, even though your information is out there, but it is always said that it's good to hear from the house this month. Yeah. Tell us more about yourself and some of your success stories. Well, uh, it's a very long uh, journey. I had uh, started uh, as a youngster playing for some clubs in Romania, amongst them, uh, uh, you know, Bucharest and Star Bucharest, probably a bit more known. I uh, had some problems, some uh, leg injuries, and at the same time I had some a bit of a family problem, uh, so I couldn't uh, go on the professional uh, side. Uh, we had to look after, you know, a number of uh, my siblings, my brother, uh, my father passed away when we were young, so I kind of had to go semi-professional that time, you know, to, to earn some money and also at the same time to play football. So uh, later uh, I decided to go into coaching, so I went to UK uh, in 1992 and uh, I start. Uh, I want to become a coach, but at that time you actually have to be, uh, I realized that you have to know a bit more than coaching. Yeah. So I started doing some management courses. At the same time, I was looking uh, very intense into the uh, peak performance for athletes. So I done uh, a degree into health and human being. And at the same time, I done a master's degree in coaching. So that took me uh, going parallel with coaching and at the same time, you know, to uh, elevate my uh, knowledge and to understand uh, how body works and how top performance works. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, I was working with, uh, I started my first job with uh, Leighton Orient for about five years. After that, I moved and I worked with uh, um, Arsenal and was uh, a number of, uh, actually two years, working with a number of uh, groups. I was working with boys, uh, with girls, particularly being a manager of uh, under 15. Mm -hmm. uh, that means manager is a little bit different because you have to have budget, so it's not like only head coach, so you have to do a little bit. See, sometimes the confusion, for example, here you have manager, but mm -hmm. actually, in fact, is uh, administration manager, or what we're supposed to be called uh, team support manager. With the you know, uh, over there as a manager, you are kind of the boss on your group. So then I moved uh, uh, to Romania for a little while. I worked with a professional club there, Rokar. Uh, then I go back to UK, work with uh, Crystal Palace, and I had lots of assignments with a number of clubs, including Liverpool, including uh, Chelsea, and I was working for the LFA, uh, for uh, FA, uh, English FA, for about uh, 18 years as a coach educator. Mm -hmm. So that. I had to go to different clubs to do mentoring for players, so I worked with all the London clubs, about 18 clubs, including Brentford, including uh, Crystal Palace, including Chelsea, including uh, uh, Fulham, I worked about a year at Fulham, so I had a pretty good uh, idea, Watford, um, so uh, lots of Premier League clubs and that gives me a good platform to understand the performance of players, uh, later moved on uh, working as a Premier League manager in Romania, Gloria Buzo. We had some interesting uh, results uh, against the powerhouse at that time was uh, um, Star Bucharest. Mm -hmm. uh, Star Bucharest, with two days before us, they uh, beat Lyon 3 0, and Lyon was a big club. Big club yeah. And us to get that draw was a, you know, a big uh, uh, result, but also give us a chance to save from relegation. So that was uh, really interested. Uh, result we had. Later uh, I moved, uh, I worked amongst others at Azam and uh, Azam in Tanzania. We had uh, fantastic results there. We had the uh, first time to win uh, Kagami Cup uh, and uh, we won the cup uh, in a spectacular way. We never considered, we haven't considered goal wow, and uh, it was, you know, historic so far. Uh, in all the tournament not to consider goal, to clean clip sheet and uh, to win it for first time for Azam. Then we had a fantastic story to go to play uh, in uh, CAF, 
uh, and we played in CAF and uh, amongst that uh, we had a great result against Bidvest. Bidvest was the champions of South Africa at that time. We won 3 nil away, 4-3 uh, at home, so it was a shock. Uh, then uh, we played uh, Esperance Tunis and we managed to beat Esperance Tunis. So it was, you know, some sort of uh, achievement into that, something uh, mm -hmm. interesting. Then uh, I moved and uh, I was a technical director uh, in India, Kerala Blasters. So I had a lot of story. If you so very, look. very long. Yeah. Camp so before actually yeah. I go to Malawi national team, mm -hmm. I worked in 14 countries in Africa. Uh, including Ghana, including Nigeria, scouting, including Tunisia, uh, Seychelles and uh, Mauritius. So I've actually worked a little bit with Mauritius uh, national team, tried to give a little bit of consultancy, but just, you know, a little bit, you no, know, was not that much for a few days. So uh, I had, you know, a uh, lot of experience. So um, I become a technical director of Malawi. By the way, I, I hope I'm not talking too fast, no, no, so no, no, they're it's able to understand, yeah. and that's why we have some accent, okay. So, uh, uh, become a technical director of Malawi national team. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we had a coach at that time, uh, Mike Moas, a very good uh, person, extremely good, and uh, I really appreciate it. But unfortunately, the result was not in his uh, favor. Uh, it was that fast kind of track when the uh, team has to qualify for the World Cup. So it was before we had a, uh, AFCON, we had a World Cup. So unfortunately, he had five losses in a row and uh, the management decided that it will be a little bit risky to go on his own. Uh, so we partner to actually meet to lead the panel for uh, AFCON. And uh, in AFCON, we had the uh, incredible story to uh, pass the group stages and uh, meanwhile to uh, win you know uh, the chances to get uh, there and also the thing was uh, we had a fantastic result with uh, Senegal uh, we drew but uh, we also had uh, a penalty in 78 minutes uh, the referee turned it down after that after consult with VR but if that was stood, and you never know, we could be top of the group mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to avoid to play Morocco. And in Morocco, we managed to prepare very well. Uh, we actually, it's interesting, people do some research on the internet, will see that we plan how to score that fantastic goal against Morocco. And uh, it happened that uh, Gambadinho was uh, very clued up. Uh, it worked, the plan worked, and we scored the goal of the tournament. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, interesting, yeah. So now so here I'm at uh, Liberia, where actually I think uh, with the whole welcoming and everyone behind us, we can produce uh, good results uh, with the Liberia national team. Okay, we'll talk more about that. I'd just like to get something clear for me. Uh, coaching, in part of what you stated, uh, focus more on club levels. Yeah coaching national team and coaching club teams. Tell us your experience, how, how are some of the, the sticky issues that you, you notice? Okay. Then? Well, it's a massive difference. Mm -hmm. People are saying, oh, coaching here and coaching there is completely different. First of all, as a national team coach, you're actually not a coach. You First of all, you're a selector. So you have to select what I do, the most informed players, the hard-working player on that given time. Mm -hmm. A player could be extremely good, but on that particular time may not be informed, may not be, you know, 100%, he may not be able to give energy. My philosophy, what they call fast and very fast, that means, you know, players, part of the philosophy is like this. All the stuff, in, players including, we have to think fast, move fast, act fast, and be well prepared and organized. So that means, for example, a player has to think fast according to the strategy what he needs to do. Okay. Okay. And then he has to act fast. That means sometimes he may have to talk to someone, sometimes may have to go to the next stage, move fast. So very quickly has to move to what it is. So basically, then he has to be organized, which actually means has to be prepared to receive that ball or to make that interception or to be ready to defend. So this way is a strategy that, including staff, they have to know exactly what they do, have to be organized, 
and to do it together because in the end of the day it's a team and that's the reason I think we can succeed because you need to be as organized as possible. Okay, just a day ago before uh, coming to this particular platform, you, you during the unveiling process it was told to the media that you were to appoint uh, two local coaches yes. and uh, you've already started the ball rolling by appointing uh, those two coaches. What did you see in them apart from the other coaches that you selected to Kevin Semway? Okay, and, and Christopher Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, Christopher Wilson. Um, well, I was looking at a variety of things. Number one, I was looking at some continuity. Okay. So first continuity is under 20 coach. He already worked, is working, was working in the country, is a very well-known professional, fantastic career. Mm -hmm. So is someone, you know, we can learn from on the domestic ground. Christopher also, he works with under 17, and recently under 17, they won, you know, four matches against Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So they must have done something good. Secondly is this, very important. Being a very short time, we have to get together as soon as possible. Okay. It's not fair for other coaches in the country, maybe some much better, but it's not fair to how we're going to assess them, okay? Lots of people could say, well, this, this, this. It won't be a fair process. It won't be a fair assessment. So basically, also, we don't know who may be interested. So they have to apply. So to do an application process is also very short. So yeah. I said, you know, most important is, as soon as possible, us to identify the potential players and to start moving. Because basically, uh, the first match is on 20, as it stands. Mm -hmm. So we have very limited amount of days. If you are to do an interview process, if you are to discuss, to see and to identify who actually be most equipped, probably going to take a lot of time. Also, one of the criteria was looking for a coach, it was to be computer literate, which actually, you know, tick the boxes. So we didn't have time, for example, to look at the coaches. Probably I said, you know, uh, some may feel um, obviously left out, but it's not by any kind of thing. So uh, the LFA tried to help me and said, you know, coach, you pick your own stuff, you do whatever you want. And that was, you know, from set from the interview. I said, you know, I want to do that. The only problem is, you know, because it's so close, I couldn't have a proper interview process. So I said, I have to get what it is. But also the thing is, I'm looking also long term. Okay. And long term is working with under 20, working with under 17, is a good platform to, you know, to transfer the knowledge from the top, everything to bottom, and maybe later to club level and grassroots. Another thing, for example, I'm doing, Nathaniel, Shema, yeah. I'm not really 